Hi, welcome to my build of Voodoo 6, a 40 inch balsa flying wing. Actually, I say 40 inch. At the moment, it's 36 inch because we haven't put the wing tips on. Now, if we look at the plans, the wing tips are optional. And I don't believe the wing tips will really add a great deal to the build. If you look in the article, the RCM magazine article that comes with the plans, it says that they're, they're just for aesthetics really and actually they slow the roll rate down which <laughs> depends how you look at it I suppose if you read about the performance of this it might be better to have a slightly lower roll rate but anyway I'm not going to put on the wingtip so it's going to be 36 inch but obviously if you decide to build this if you're going to follow on and, and, and get a, a, a build of this then you know you can decide yourself whether you put the wingtips on or not right now in this video, we're going to get the wing completely finished to a point that it just needs a really good sand and then we can cover it. So, what we need to do now is we need to get this central portion of the wing covered, finished, all built up with, with hatches. That's the only thing now that we've got to do like I said, other than a really good sanding and, and, and some, some profiling and things like the elevator and, uh, and finishing off the leading edge. But we'll just have a quick look off, uh, at the elevator first. I've just done the linkage for that since the last video. So we'll have a look at that and then we'll spin the plane, the, the wing round and we'll have a look at how we're gonna build up that central section. We've well, fitted the control horn to the elevator and I've coupled the servo and the elevator together using this flexible snake. Now the outer sheath, I drew a nice straight line of where it needs to go and I've done three pairs of holes either side of this snake. And you can see here, I've got a table, uh, cable tie, a really thin, light, sort of transparent one and I'm gonna use cable ties just to hold that outer sheath nice and secure in place and as I said I've got three locations and then I'm going to epoxy the outer sheath into place here once I've got this um, central portion finished. Now I've set the throws for this and that works quite well it's huge throws it's about an inch and a half so that should give us plenty of uh, <laughs> plenty of movement there uh, the, uh, the servo is a little bit jerky at the moment, but I think that's um, possibly my um, servo tester isn't, isn't the best. But anyway, this outer sheath here, I won't be fitting until I've done all of the covering. So it, 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 it'll just be really hard to, uh, to cover these booms with the, uh, with the sheath in place. And it'll be easy enough just to poke it through that hole and then attach it with these cable ties. Right, well the first thing we need to do before we can start laying all this out and covering it over is take a look at these ribs. In the RCM article it says build the ribs as per spec and then trim them down in height uh, as much as you can to accommodate the radio gear. In hindsight we could have probably taken them right down to the, the same as, as the sides here because radio gear is quite small these days. But having said that, there's a benefit to having them higher at the back here because it gives more area for the booms to glue onto. But I've drawn a line here, which hopefully you can see, showing how I'm going to reduce that height. So there'll still be a little bit of a bump in the front, but much reduced. I'm going to reduce it by about 3 8 10, 10 mil, something like that. So that's going to be the first job I'm going to do. And then we need to think about the ribs that are going to go in here. There's two more ribs. We need to compartmentalise this because we've got the fuel tank. We need access covers and we'll need access to the back for the servo and the battery. Now I've, I've done two ribs for the rear which are already cut down to this, uh, this line here. So they're smaller and I'll just fit those in. So they will fit in around about here. Now what we need to do with these is make sure that we leave enough width there 
so that we can get the battery sidewards. If the battery sidewards, it's got more distance to move for balancing, getting that CG right, rather than if it's like that. So I'm going to put those ribs in about that kind of that kind of width. Now I've got a piece of sheeting here with a bit cut out where the snake comes in for the elevator and that is just going to glue on the back like that and with that glued into place the snake will still come in and out because I'm not going to glue that until I've done the covering. So I've got that on there. Now the next job I'm going to be doing, I'm just thinking of the order of this, is I've got this piece of quarter inch balsa that I'm going to fit in here, which actually comes, I won't push it all the way, well that is all the way down now actually, that now will come to the top of these ribs and these ribs at the side will be cut down. I'm going to sheet that in permanently and then I'm going to make hatches for these two. Now we'll get back to the locking mechanisms and the hatches later. Now for the front here I've got two more ribs. I've got one that's going to go there like that. I've got another one somewhere on my bench just under the wing. I've got another one that I've cut out that's going to go there. These aren't going to go against these bearers. There's going to be a gap at the side and you can see there's a gap down here and that's because I'm going to have a strap that goes under the bearers to hold the fuel tank in place. The fuel tank is going to sit there and there's enough room either side of the fuel tank to allow a bit of foam down the side and a bit of foam underneath. I will reduce the height of this a little bit not too much because I don't want to weaken this front leading edge but I will reduce it a little bit and that can sit on there. It would be better there because the CG is just on this spar here and so the tank being empty full the difference it will make to the CG will be less than if it was way forward like this. So that's going like that. I've then got these pieces I've made just like doublers which I'm going to put in here on the ribs. I've got one for each rib that'll go there, I've got another one for here and another one for there. That's just to give that a little bit of strength. Once we've got this built up like this I'm then going to be looking to sheet this piece in, I don't know whether I've just said that, sheet that in permanently and then make one, two, and three hatches to uh, to cover that and I've had a few ideas on that hatches but we'll come back and look at that once I've got all these in place. I thought now was a good time to have a look at where I've got with this. I've got all of the, the the rib sections in now and I've put thickness on these to support covers and the same on on here and I've sanded them all to shape and uh, I'll just move the camera and have a look at this, it's giving it a lovely profile. You see that's turned out to be quite a nice sleek profile, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. And, and to get that, once I'd put the pieces in place, I did the back first then the front, I just used this really big sanding stick and just got the profile nice and just sanded it, um, sanded it with that. And I've also got a smaller one, which is still in my pocket, and uh, I use that to do the, the back here between the boom. I'm going to have covers on these two sides, left and right, and then the centre is going to be left open. But before I make the covers for these, I'm going to do some leading edge sheeting. I'm just going to stick a piece on there like that, and glue that in place, sand it to profile, and then the cover will just be from this up to there. So it will be a, a much smaller cover and I think that will give me a much nicer, smoother, cleaner finish on the front here. So I'll do that on either side like that. I don't need bags of access into here. This is for the radio and this is my throttle servo. Because I'm making the covers out of 116, 1.5mm uh, sorry, uh, balsa wood, these captive nuts would soon damage this and pull through. 
So I've just been playing about here and seeing what I think and this is what I'm going to do with the covers. The covers will have a piece of one and a half mil plywood glued in like this. I've just, just cut it in and, and glued it in and that will be where the bolt holds, screws down through and uh, and that will just be a lot a lot stronger and um, and and more resilient so that's those dealt with uh, oh I've still got the can't get this out can I oh yes okay. I I've still got the flexible snake to go in for the throttle servo to the throttle and I'll probably just put a clamp on here on the uh, on the rail somehow to to hold that but that's a an easy enough job so I think that's that's starting to look really good and I'm really pleased with it. So what I'll do now is get on with the rest of it and just get those uh, get those covers finished. Right, well, you can see we've got this all finished now and I'll just run you through what, what we've done. Uh, got the hatch on here and you can see there is this strengthening piece of one and a half mil plywood to uh, to stop the, the bolt head pulling through and on the back of these covers same with this one here we've got a little bit of strengthening where that uh, plywood's glued in and we've got these lugs here so that the covers just hook in and uh, and screw down and it's a really quick simple process they, they they're screwing down into uh, into captive nuts which are just held on the underside of these cross pieces and then I put a bit of CA on that just to make sure they were held into place. That seems to be quite a nice solution. I, I did think of making them in one and a half mil ply to make them a little bit stronger because they're quite flimsy but I didn't want to increase the weight. You can see here we've got the servo, we've got that connected up through to the throttle. The outer sheath here of this snake isn't glued in place I will do that once I've done all of the covering. And there's a block here and a cable tie just to, uh, to hold that sheath into place as it runs down towards the, uh, the engine. Now I need to fuel proof these, uh, well, definitely the fuel bay or the fuel tank bay here, but also probably these two side pieces because there's holes for the cables to go underneath where fuel could leak sidewards. I've taken some off the leading edge and I've got a piece of balsa on the back just to sit the tank nice and level and I'm going to put foam on the base, foam on the sides and back so that is nicely insulated from as much insulation as possible. I, I, I think when, flying wings have a tendency to put a lot of vibration into the tank, well that's my experience anyway, so the more I can insulate that from vibration the, uh, the better to, uh, to stop uh, to stop foaming. Now to hold the tank in I've made two simple clips like this and essentially this piece here hooks under the the rail, the engine mount rail and just nice and easy there we go and then I'm going to use elastic bands to hold that and I will just run elastic band over to the clip the other side I just it seems a really good way to hold it nice and secure in that foam and I'll just need to make sure that I replace the elastic bands and keep an eye on them so that they don't uh, so that they don't break and, and, and perish <laughs> mid flight well anyway I'm going to put all this together now with the servo in the back here and, and the battery you, you saw earlier there was plenty of movement for that battery for the CG I'm going to put this all together and we'll see how it looks and we'll see where that balance point is for now right well I've got it all together now for one last time before we start doing the covering and it's more or less all together anyway there's a there's only one bolt holding the engine there'll be four eventually there's a few little screws in, in the back that need to go in and um, and uh, a stay on the pipe but you know what I'm really excited this is looking really good if not slightly scary but anyway the, so everything's on there that's, that, that needs putting on we've got the battery in and the CG is pretty good it's more or less there on the money and we must remember that that battery 
we'll slide backwards and forwards a fair bit in that compartment to allow us to finely tune the CG once we've got it all covered. Well, what's next? The next job is for me to give this a really good sand and make sure this ball nose and leading edge is just lovely. Make sure that all these hatches smooth in and, and there's no, uh, no ridges and things like that. And then it'll be time to get this thing covered. And covering is going to be the next video. And I hope you'll enjoy, join me for that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing how this has developed in this video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, come back and follow us in this journey with the build of Voodoo 6, a really exciting flying wing.